Hi, welcome back to Things Made Simple. My name is Tyler, and today we're going to be doing a face reveal. That's right, we're going to play an F major 7th chord on this YM3812 sound processor. I know, dad jokes aside, uh, I just needed sort of a hello world kind of program, something that would let me play a few notes on the microcontroller to make sure that we've got everything working and communicating and that we can actually manipulate the registers on this processor. So this is the most basic project I could come up with to control a YM3812. Today, we'll build the circuit, we'll upload some code into it, and then uh, in the next video, we'll walk through that code in more detail so you understand how everything works. So with that said, let's go make a F major seventh chord. If the heart of this project is the YM3812, then the brain is this chip here, the AVR128DA28. I like to think of it as an Arduino Nano, but in chip form, and like way more powerful. At its core, it's an AVR microcontroller that runs at 24 megahertz, and the speed is auto-tuned internally, so you don't really need any other circuitry to get this thing working. Just a couple of decoupling capacitors, and you're good to go. It also supports a wide range of operating voltages, though we're only going to use 5 volts for this project. The 128 here stands for a luxurious 128 kilobytes of program space, and 16 kilobytes of RAM. That's like way more than we need for this project. In terms of connections and ports, this thing supports 10 analog to digital converters and a digital to analog converter. It has I squared C, SPI, UART, and three hardware serial ports. We're only gonna use one today, but if you're interested, you can check out this MIDI router that I built using all three. Finally, everything comes in a neat little 28 pin package with Arduino IDE support, and support for the Universal Programming Debug Interface. And best of all, there's still a few hundred of them in stock at Mouser, which is kind of saying something these days. So act now while supplies last. And I swear this is not a paid promotion. Next in our lineup is the 74HC595. This serial shift register takes the SPI output from our microcontroller and latches it into the 8-bit data bus that we need to control the YM3812. The YM3812 then takes that data along with some other control signals from the microcontroller and then uses an external 3.58 MHz clock to generate a digital audio output stream. Then a new chip, the Y3014B, takes that digital stream and converts it into analog sound, which we then buffer using an operational amplifier. And this gives you music. Now that we know the players, let's take a look at the schematic. Starting on the left, we have our microcontroller, and we're powering it with 5 volts along with two 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitors. There's a whole lot of unused pins right now, but we're going to need the room later as we expand this circuit. You can program the microcontroller with a universal programming and debugging interface using one data wire, but if you have a USB to FTDI cable like I do, then you're going to want to hook it up like this through a diode. Or maybe you have the other FTDI cable that has slightly different colors. Either way, hook it up like this, and you should be able to program it through the Arduino IDE. Next up, the reset button. The microcontroller already has a pull-up resistor internally, so you just need a switch that connects the pin to ground. Now, according to the data sheet, you also need an RC filter with a 330 ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor, but I just kind of cut those corners for now. To hook up the 74HC595, we connect the SPI data output and clock from the microcontroller to the data input and shift clock on the shift register. Pin 9 of the microcontroller is going to control the latch clock on the 74HC595, and that'll latch the data so that its output becomes visible to the YM3812. Those data lines then connect to the YM3812, along with the control lines like write, address select, initialize clear, and chip select. Also, an oscillator supplies a 3.58 MHz clock signal for the YM3812. Because we're not reading anything off the YM3812 or using its internal timers, we can just ignore the IRQ pin and tie the read pin to 5 volts. The other pins connected to the Y3014B work surprisingly like the connection between the microcontroller and the shift register. There's a serial data connection and a clock that shifts the data, as well as a latch that sends the analog voltage to the output pin. Now this chip needs a reference voltage that's halfway between ground and 5 volts, 
and it generates that voltage internally on the RB pin. But you need an operational amplifier and a couple of capacitors to buffer that voltage and then feed it back into the Y3014B on the MP pin. From there, the output connects to another operational amplifier configured as a buffer, where it's then coupled through a 4.7 UF capacitor and current limited through a 1K resistor. The op amp also needs power and decoupling capacitors, which I've shown here at the bottom. The TLO72 that I'm showing here, or the LM358, both seem to work fine in this circuit, even though we're using 0 to 5 volts. They're not the best for rail to rail operation like this, but because the output is 1 volt peak to peak centered at 2.5 volts, I'm really coming nowhere near the ground or 5 volt rails. But if you wanted to bring this up to the 10 volts peak to peak of your rack, we're going to have to modify this circuit quite a bit and add a negative voltage rail. I think we're going to do that in another video. Okay, enough yapping, let's put this thing together. Okay, here's our circuit all wired up on breadboard. I've gone ahead and attached the FTDI cable and made sure to keep the wires all color coded so if things get disconnected, we can just hook it back up with no problem. I also added a resistor and LED here, and that'll give us some indication of when things are being written from the microcontroller onto the YM3812. It's on pin 7 of port D, and in the code, I just turn it on and off as the data is being written. All right, let's pop open the Arduino IDE, set it up, and then see if we can get this thing programmed. You can find the code that we're going to use today on my GitHub, and I'll post a link to it in the description. Just go to the Articles 1 through 3 folder, where you're going to find a folder with the source code as well as another folder with a schematic. Once you've downloaded the source code, you should be able to open the .ino file, and you should see three tabs on the top of the screen here. Now, this isn't the code for the entire module yet. We're going to work up to that as we add more features in future videos. Instead, this is the absolute simplest version of the code that I could come up with. But if it still looks like gibberish, don't worry. In the next video, we're going to go through it in detail, and we'll see how this code really works. For now, let's just get this thing configured, compiled, and copied onto the microcontroller. To start, go to the Tools menu, select Board, and then choose the Board's Manager. In the search box, type DX Core. Select the latest version and install it. Then go back to the Board's Manager. Choose DX Core and find the AVR DA series no bootloader. Under chip, make sure the AVR128 DA28 is selected. Should be the first option. And then under programmer, choose serial UPDI 230400. Now connect the FTDI cable to the USB plug and then go back in to the port menu and you should be able to find a new USB option. Click that and then you should be able to compile and upload the code onto the microcontroller. Okay, looks like it worked. Let's see if there are any signs of life. All right, let's add some power and see what happens. Okay, well, good sign. The light is working. So that means that it's definitely producing some kind of signal to the YM3812. Let's see if any audio comes out. Well, that sounds like an F major 7 chord to me. Our face reveal is a success. Hopefully, if you followed along and breadboarded this circuit out yourself, you're listening to your own glorious F major 7th chord. Uh, but if you ran into any issues or uh, have any questions about how anything works, I've got way more detail on my blog, thingsmadesimple.com, and uh, of course, all of the code is available on GitHub. In the next video, we're gonna actually go through that code in way more detail, and we'll kind of rebuild it from scratch so that you understand exactly how it works. And then I think in the next video after that, we'll add MIDI functionality so that you can actually control what pitch is being played through an external MIDI device. So if you want to continue on this journey with me, hit like, hit subscribe, and in the meantime, thanks for watching Things Made Simple, and we'll see you next time.